for the moms who raised us up, gave us hope, and made us strong. For the young moms who became moms sooner than expected and gave it all they had. For the single moms who had to figure out how to do this on their own. For those who never got called mom, but who cared for us all like a mom would. For the hurting moms who've loved and lost but never given up. For the praying moms who don't always know what to do, but always know who to talk to. For the working moms, the stay home moms, the cooking moms, and the takeout moms. For taking care of us when you barely had enough time to take care of yourself. For teaching us how to walk and how to make a difference. For the late night snuggles and the early morning pancakes. For sitting with us after our first breakup. For lifting us up when others put us down. For the rides, the meals, the laundry, and the birthday parties. For the years, tears, laughter, and love. It's not enough, but we want to say thank you. Thank you for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. We love you. We honor you. We remember you. We thank you. Greetings to you on this fifth Sunday of Easter from St. Benjamin's Lutheran Church in Westminster, Maryland. I'm Pastor David Schaefer. I'm glad to have with me today Kim Hobbs, Bonnie Davis, Marshall Joes, and Creason Schaefer helping with these devotions. This is our ninth filming of devotions for this period of time that we found ourselves in, this social distancing, stay-at-home, quarantine time. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to be back here in this place and in this space together with you all. That is hopefully coming soon. In the meanwhile, though, we have these devotions provided. Um, we use the ELW for our limited liturgy, for our hymn singing, and so on and so forth. If you have an ELW at home, you're certainly welcome to grab that off the shelf and use it. If you have an LBW, the hymnal that preceded our ELW, and you have that, we're going to try to include hymn numbers um, as we go that might be also cross-referenced in the LBW, so you can turn to those and follow along if you're a music reader. We also make available to you the opportunity to purchase an ELW. We could arrange in some way, shape, or form to have it mailed to your home if you would give us the funds to purchase it. And I did a little bit of homework and found that a pew edition, one like we have here in the pews at the church, costs $25 a piece. $40 for a nice little pocketbook size one, and $22.50 downloadable to your iPhone. So just in case you wanted to know or have those opportunities. We begin our service, our time together, with the prelude for today. Won't you join me in the confession and absolution as we have it on our PowerPoint? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen we pause in confession.
and together we say, Gracious, Gracious God, God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned from you and given, given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. repent. In, In your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things, and unknown, things we, we have done and things we have left to do. do. Turn us Turn again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that, so that we, we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in our sin and has made us alive together with the Christ. By grace we have been saved and in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. <laughs> May Almighty God strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. <coughs> Opening hymn 558 in the ELW. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So my friends, if you have a tote at home that contains some building blocks, now's a good time to go and get it. Bring it back into that space where you're watching um, our church devotions. And while I talk, you can begin doing a little bit of building. making a wall to put between me and creasing. It's important to keep balance in building the wall, isn't it? Like right now, it could all fall over. <laughs> What's the important part of the beginning of a wall? It's the foundation, right? It's the bottom. Got to make sure that's steady. 
parents, when your young people finish their creation with their imagination, it might not be during these devotions, send us a picture of it on Facebook. I want to talk about how we are strong when we are put together like these blocks. This is an interesting time that we're living in. <laughs> we're strong. Even when we can't be together, we're still strong. Look at that. I think I used 15 blocks and <coughs> nothing's falling yet. I'm not going to breathe too heavy. Um, but the bottom, important, right? Our faith in Jesus, the be a very basic part of the law here, this structure that was built. And then all of us being part of this creation, all of us being important supporters of the rest of this wall. And we have the wonderful opportunities that we have in these days of being inside with just our family or maybe having a, a visitor or two, but have a really great opportunity to be Jesus for others and to be strong and to be building one another up in Jesus the Christ. Please take pictures of your creation, your building block creation today. Send it to us on our Facebook page, our St. Benjamin's Facebook page. Post it there. We got a couple of door pictures last week after uh, Seminary and Jason's um, challenge to us to do some ideas of how Jesus is the door He's the gate for us, and he invited us to draw pictures of our doors, whether they be the doors to our house or doors inside or the doors to the rest of the world, looking from the inside out. So here again, another opportunity to put your artistic talents to, to work. May God be with you in your building up one another and our world in Jesus. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 7. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the, the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For his preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. But filled with... The, but filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. And the refrain, if you can join me with that, will be, Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. 
Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who, pers her, who persecute me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Christ is the cornerstone of saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual mu milk so that may, it may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and, like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order, that, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. On the night that he is to be arrested, Jesus shares final words with his disciples. As the one through whom God is known, he promises to go before them and act on their behalf. And so it is written, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Now Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Now Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I needed a refuge. Last summer on our beach getaway, which 
seems so long ago now, to North Carolina's Ocean Isle, I got caught out in an early morning rainstorm. I was running from our hotel to about two miles down the way, and as I got about half a mile from the hotel, did it ever let loose. A torrential downpour. Truthfully, I became a bit anxious about my safety, and of course, I didn't have my cell phone with me to call back to Lexi and the girls to come and get me. It was an unexpected and soaking rain. I mean, all the way through, if you know what I mean. I looked for a place of refuge, and I found it, of all places, a Pentecostal church with a large overhang that was just a couple of steps down the way. I needed a refuge. The term refuge rings uniquely true in today's world, doesn't it? Under orders to shelter in place, many of us are reconfiguring our domiciles to be fortresses against the unseen but deadly foe called COVID-19. Armed with our sprays and disinfectants, we raise the drawbridge and fortify our homes in a society-wide attempt to flatten the curve. And when we go out, well, we're a little bit more than careful with the armor that we don, our masks, and for some of us, our gloves. This week's readings also deal with the topic of refuge. For the psalmist, God is a refuge from danger. And John's Jesus offers heavenly shelter to his disciples' troubled hearts, promising to prepare them for a heavenly home. In Acts 7, which Marshall read, the martyr Stephen takes refuge in a glorious vision of the heavens even while he's being stoned to death. And in 1 Peter 2, the reader is urged to seek shelter in restraint from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Today's texts remind us that to live on this earth these days is to live in a complex place, at times seemingly like a war zone, and we're looking for a refuge. Nobody says it better than Martin Luther himself whose own times were afflicted by pandemics and plagues. It's in the words of a mighty fortress, the Lutheran national anthem that Luther wrote. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him, his rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure, one little word shall fell him. As this current pandemic makes clear, some members of our society struggle to endure the rage of the pandemic more than others. Part of our struggle against COVID-19 is to acknowledge and address the needs of those who are particularly vulnerable to the virus's cruel consequences. Now's the time to honor the fifth commandment, which Luther interprets in this way. We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. We wear masks and we keep social distance. We shelter in place and socially isolate for important reasons, not only for our own health, but also for the health of others. This week's text could not be more timely. In this moment of heightened anxiety, it is important to remember that true peace, the peace of the gospel, does not come from our vain attempts to protect ourselves from earthly harm. No leader, vaccine, or test can truly bring peace. These are important and necessary measures for the flourishing of life in this world, as Luther makes clear above, but they do not bring us the peace of Christ. The peace described variously in this week's text does not depend upon a calm storm, the end of adverse conditions, or the removal of distress. 
To the contrary, the peace of God holds us safely even while we are beset as a city under siege or suffering from the lashings of contentious tongues. The psalmist in Psalm 31 invites us to trust because we know that my times are in your hands. This is not merely a resignation to fate. It's a deep trust in the goodness of God, even when God's goodness seems to be hidden or obscure. In John 14, Jesus addresses those troubled disciples. And he calls upon them to believe in God, whose love and works they have concretely seen in the person of Jesus. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If you do not, then believe me because of the work themselves. But it would seem like Jesus makes the command especially clear. And Peter seems to be hardest to accept it. Immediately prior to today's gospel reading, Jesus informs Peter that he would deny him three times. With the weight of this news on Peter's shoulders, Jesus tells his disciples not to be troubled, but instead to believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus calls the disciples to find peace in his trustworthiness, despite the building storm clouds. And Stephen, similarly, finds peace in the thick of persecution. Immediately following Stephen's sermon, the crowd becomes enraged, drags him outside of the city, and begins to stone him. In between the bone-breaking blows of his assailants, Stephen sees Jesus at the right hand of God and testifies to that vision. Just before his death, Stephen commits his spirit to Jesus. And then in the sign that the spirit of Christ fills him, asks that God not hold this sin against them. Stephen finds peace in knowing that the resurrected Jesus sees his suffering, is enthroned on high, and will soon receive him into his heavenly court. At the peak of adversity, Stephen receives the gift of peace, Jesus himself resurrected and glorified. Dear friends, you know we live in a time of profound anxiety, kind of like what I experienced on that early morning ocean isle run in the storming rain. Sometimes feels like our world is filled with things that threaten to undo us. My prayer is, and our prayer should be, that we take time to remember what kind of peace Jesus gives us. It's the kind of peace that prevails in the thick of the battle. It's the kind of peace that looks at death and sickness and illness and knows that they have ultimately been have been conquered in Christ's own body. This peace alone allows us to say with the psalmist, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you. In the sight of everyone, in the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help and hope in times that are interesting and unnerving. God, we thank you for centering our lives in you. Thank you, Lord, for being our way, our truth, and our life. Amen.
please join me as we pray together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, our Lord, who who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, Mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Humble us, creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. Lord, in your mercy, Hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Generous God, You call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 We are bold to pray that prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as as we forgive those who trespass against us. And and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may God, who has brought us from death to life, fill us with great joy. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us now and forever. Amen. Last hymn to, excuse me, 380.
Happy Mother's Day to all. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.